Hello, uh, my name is Bob Paris, and today I'm going to give you a, a quick, a quick introduction to LC mass spectrometry. Uh, explain a little bit about the, the equipment. Uh, run some compounds through here. Uh, also, we're going to talk about uh, sample preparation, and then at the end, uh, uh, we'll go through some data and do some data analysis. So, what we have here is an HPLC mass, spectrom mass spectrometer. And this part here is a uh, HPLC. And uh, over here is the mass spectrometer. So the role of the HPLC in this process is to deliver two things, is one, to deliver solvents and compounds uh, to the mass spectrometer. Uh, also, using a column in the HPLC, we are ab able to separate compounds. The HPLC consists of three, our HPLC consists of three parts. Uh, a pump, which is located on the bottom. Uh, an auto sampler, which uh, injects sample. And lastly, a column compartment that has a column inside, which is used to uh, have some retention and also separate compounds. So the way it works is the pump on the bottom pumps mobile phase, which is located on top. And, and today we'll be using acetonitrile in water that has formic acid that helps ionize the compound. That's drawn into the pump and then goes into the pump and then it comes out this uh, the mobile phase will be flowing through here at a flow rate of 0.4 mils per minute into the auto sampler. Uh, the job of the auto sampler is to inject the samples. We keep our samples in either uh, these bile uh, plates, or we also have the, can use 96 or 348 well plates. There's a needle here. Uh, when when you set the machine to run, it will pull the sample tray out, the needle will come over, pick it, it'll pick up and then make an injection. Once that happens, uh, the, the mobile phase and the sample will travel through to the column compartment where you can, we have the option of heating uh, the mobile phase if we have to. And it will then go into the column and based on the chemistry of the compound uh, and the column, it will uh, slow down and elute slower than the mobile phase coming going through. This enables us to um, separate, if we have multiple compounds, we're able to separate them based on the chemistry of the compound, uh, the type of mobile phase we're using, and also the stationary phase inside the column. So once it goes through the column, it will, the mobile phase will travel into the mass spectrometer uh, and the mass spectrometer has uh, four different uh, main pieces to it. One is the source where the mobile phase, which enters as a liquid, is ionized, heated, and turned into a gas. It's the, the area where our compound will be ionized for detection. Once it goes into the source, it will be drawn into the mass spectrometer, which would has two quadrupoles separated by collision cell. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do what they call multiple reaction monitoring, uh, where we will select uh, a mass, and that would be the mass of the, um, our precursor or our compound, and we'll use the quadrupole number one to uh, lock in on that mass, and we'll only allow that mass to come through and then that will enter the collision cell. And then in the collision cell, there's energy and gas, and we will adjust those parameters to fragment the compound into uh, product ions. And then we will, after the, everything is optimized, we will be able to um, set up our HPLC mass spec uh, method to detect only uh, uh, compounds coming through that have that specific precursor um, 
uh, product transition that gives us a very specific uh, way of detecting things. So the first thing we're going to do is to tune on our compound and the compound I've selected is LMP744, which is an NCI compound. And uh, we will tune on that, both that compound and its deuterated internal standard, which is essentially the same compound where, but it's three mass units heavier. heavier. The uh, three of the hydrogens were, are replaced by deuterium. So chemically it behaves exactly the same way uh, in the mass spectrometer, except for being three mass units heavier. So we have, I prepared a syringe that has uh, one microgram per mil of both 744 and its deuterated uh, internal standard. I will turn that on and we'll go through this. This line here is a liquid at seven microliters per minute. And at this point, I'm only gonna use the HPLC for solvent delivery. The only thing I'm gonna do with the HPLC is set it to flow at 0.4 mils per minute. And that will come through here and it will meet up with our two compounds we have in here with, with this T. And that will give us a continuous flow of our compound and that will allow us to change the parameters of the mass spectrometer to uh, optimize the largest uh, M plus H ion. So I've just turned the, the mass spectrometer on, on tuning mode. And the mass of our compound is of LMP4, uh, 744 is 452. And its internal standard, deuterated internal standard is 456. In this case, we're ionizing it with a proton. So we, end up with a mass to charge of 453 and 457. And what I do is I change the different parameters uh, in the source region of the mass spectrometer to optimize, to get the largest uh, uh, precursor or compound scans here. So we have a number of things I change. There's curtain gas, there's an ion spray voltage, uh, a temperature to, uh, turn the mobile phase from a liquid to a gas. And there's uh, also two other gases that I apply. And then there's also the clustering potential that helps to free our compound from any uh, clusters that may form with uh, the solvent that's, that's in there. So I have uh, optimized this already with this. And you can see I have uh, two nice peaks here. Uh, so that's our precursor. Uh, that's our M plus H ions. The next step I want to do is to uh, have these uh, fragment these compounds in the collision cell and look for fragments of these compounds. So what I will do here is I will stop this from acquiring. I will change it from a Q1 scan uh, and then I will use a product ion scan and I will take the mass I have here and enter it here. This will let our first quadrupole will lock in on that mass and then the compound will be uh, fragmented in the collision cell. And I will set the second quadrupole to scan for any fragments. So we can see here, this is our precursor scan. This is LMP744 plus a hydrogen, which is 453. And by adjusting the collision voltage in the collision cell by raising it, We can see that I get one major uh, product ion scan. So this is a, what we call a, a precursor product scan mass transition. Once I have this and I have all these numbers here, I go ahead and I put this into our data acquisition. And then when we do make an injection where the, we inject samples, uh, it will look for the mass spectrometer will look for uh, species that only have this particular characteristic, that means it has to have a, a, a precursor mass of 453 and then a product line of 392. I, so this is for the, our, our compound and then I can change it for our internal standard, 
which is three mass units heavier. It's four mass units heavier. I just saw that there. Sorry for that mistake. It's actually 457, but the same uh, product dying of 392. And once I had, like I said, once I have this information, I will go ahead and put this into uh, our data acquisition program. Okay, so once that uh, we have the, the tuning parameters established, uh, the second part to uh, develop the method would be to actually do the chromatography. You want to develop a method that's that's reproducible, uh, that's quick, it doesn't have a long run time, but also accurate. So we do the chromatography part of this now. Is So now the tuning is done and we're going to actually uh, you know, you have to inject samples and be able to see them. So I set up a method here to that will use acetonitro in water, pumped, like I said earlier, through, through the column, it picks up the sample, and then I can vary the percentages of both the water and the acetonitro over time to move my uh, peak where I want it to come out. And I've done this earlier. And here's an injection that we already did. And the, so the x-axis is time. And the sample is injected at time zero. And our compounds come out at 1.67 minutes with using this method. Uh, and it's monitoring both compounds here. So I can separate them and look at them. And you can notice that the uh, the internal standard comes out, uh, the internal standard on the bottom comes out exactly the same time as our uh, compound of interest. This is crucial in mass spectrometry because whatever happens, things in the source region where it's ionized can change uh, fluctuations in power in the building or what have you in there. Uh, having something that eludes at the same time uh, allows compensation for differences in ionizations. So we have a method here where uh, our compound comes out at 1.64. So once we have our method, we're actually, uh, HPLC method, we're actually able to then start to uh, process samples and analyze samples. Okay, so once once we have our LCMS method and we're able to detect the compound, the next step is able to uh, we have to be able to take our compound out of plasma, or any other biological matrix, matrix that you might want to examine. But today I'm going to uh, do plasma. So there's different types of extraction techniques that, that they they are techniques to try to get your compound out of plasma. Uh, so you, that, that, that makes it cleaner for the mass spectrometer. Uh, so we have four uh, different methods that we use here in this laboratory. Uh, three of them are using liquid. And then over here is a solid phase extraction apparatus. So I usually generally with a new compound come to study, I will I will try different techniques to see what our best extraction efficiency is. And today we're going to use uh, a cyanitrile, uh, terbutyl methyl ether, dichloromethane. And I'm going to show you just quickly three different solvents tests. I'm putting 200 microliters of plasma in each one.
and I will follow that with the different types of solvents. The first is a C-nitrile, and you can use a C-nitrile for one of two methods. One would be a dilute and shoot, and that's the easiest method. You would simply add it to your sample, centrifuge your sample, take off the supernatant, and inject that into the mass spectrometer. Or you could uh, blow it down, take the supernatant off, blow it down, and then resuspend. The second one is TBME, terbutomethyl ether. The third one is dichloromethane. I want to show you the difference with these. After you have the plasma, so with the acetonitrile, uh, that acts to precipitate the proteins where they come down to the bottom. After center, after vortexing and centrifuging it, it turns out like this. You can see that, and you simply can take the supernatant. It's one one phase here. Now, you can, like I said, you can either inject that into the mass spectrometer. With some methods, I do that. Or if I have to concentrate the sample, what I can do is blow it down uh, in an end of app, which I'll show you a little later, and then resuspend it. it. Makes a more concentrated sample. The ether sample forms two layers. You can see our plasma is on the, on the bottom. Plasma is he heavier than the ether, and the ether is on, on top. So depending on your, the chemistry of the compound, if it likes the ether, uh, the goal is here is to try to get as much of the compound out of the plasma into the ether phase. That, that can be blown down later. And then lastly, I have dichloromethane. And this is a messier thing. I do not use this as much anymore, uh, as much anymore with mass spectrometry as I did when I used to do just HPLC. But you can see our plasma is on top. And now to get to our, you know, the, what, what, we, what we want here is to have the compounds come out of the plasma into the dichloromethane. Uh, you can see this is a little more difficult because you actually, to get it out, you actually have to put a pipette through the plasma to the bottom layer, blow out some of the plasma, and then aspirate the dichloromethane off. Lastly, what I have is a solid phase extraction apparatus, which is here. And we can also do dilute and shoot or do protein cleanup with this. You can see the solid phase extraction on the bottom of this will do 96 samples at once and I can collect it by vacuum into a 96 well plate for further processing or direct injection into the mass spectrometer. Okay, for today's example, we're using 744, like I said, LMP 744. And this was developed, this assay was developed about eight years ago when we had an older mass spectrometer that didn't have the sensitivity of the mass spectrometer I showed you today. Uh, if I would do this method over, I would do it probably an acetonitrile dilutant shoot where I would add acetonitrile like this to the plasma, vortex it, spin it down, and inject it straight in the mass spectrometer. But it, our older mass spectrometer didn't have that, so we had to concentrate our drug that we would use uh, 200 microliters of plasma, uh, and then we use tert butyl ether and extract the compound that way, and then blow it down, uh, and then resuspend it 50 microliters. So you're making it four times more concentrated. Uh, 
that we needed that with the older mass spectrometer it didn't have the sensitivity of the, like I said, the one I showed you today. I showed a different extraction technique. And like I said, today we're gonna to use the uh, MTBE, methyl terpenoid ether extraction technique. And once uh, we add the plasma and the ether, the next step would be to vortex the samples. And I usually do that for one minute. And then when that's When that's done, I will centrifuge, using a centrifuge, put the Eppendorf tubes into the centrifuge for five minutes at 17,000 times G. And then what's nice about the ether, you said there was two different layers. There's the, the plasma layer that's on the bottom and the ether layer on top. Well, what I do then is I can freeze that sample and it only takes a few minutes at minus 80. And once that's done, what we have here is a plasma that's frozen on the bottom, but our ethers is, is remains uh, liquid. And I can decant that into a glass tube or pipetted. And then I place the tube into an apparatus that's called an Enavap. And what the, the purpose of this instrument or this piece of equipment is to dry your sample down. By turning it on, I will uh, blow nitrogen through these uh, needles and that will blow uh, or cause our ether to evaporate. Okay, so we we blew down our sample and as we evaporated the uh, ether from the sample in the Inovap, and here's our tube, and what we need to do is resuspend it. And so I will take some acetonitrile water, in this case, 30% acetonitrile, 70% water, 100 microliters of that. add it to our tube and then vortex it. So it's vortex. And now we have to transfer the 100 microliters to an HPLC vial. So now we have our sample it's been extracted from plasma and it's now in an HPLC vial and it's ready for injection. Okay. So now I have my HPLC vial and I will place that into the auto sampler rack. And now the sample is ready to be analyzed. I then turn my HPLC on, set up my sequence table and inject my sample. So when I'm developing a method, once I have the particular extraction technique that's suitable, that is reproducible and uh, it gets the greatest extraction efficiency, uh, I'm ready to start to validate the method. And then I can I do that first by preparing a standard curve. And in this case, we have our standard curve will be from one nanogram to a thousand nanograms. And I also make quality control samples. Uh, and I believe ours are two nanograms, 50 nanograms and 800 nanograms per mil. 
I prepare my standards and then I pipette just as I did before 200 microliters of plasma in all my tubes, the different standard concentrations and the QC concentrations. And then this time I will, I add internal standard, which I will do that first here. I add internal standard to every sample except the blank. And it, like I said before, the internal standard is used so, sort of to, to normalize uh, the data. So whatever happens to our compound happens to internal standard. For instance, if I were to spill some of my sample during the uh, preparation, I will spill a proportion of internal standard, the same amount. If I lose 50 microliters, I will lose internal standard and I will lose uh, my compound. But in the end, when we quantify the data, that will normalize each other. Also, it counts for difference in ionization, like I said earlier, if there's a problem with the ionization, or not a problem actually, but a fluctuation in building power or when that when it first uh, enters the source, whatever happens to the compound will happen to the internal standard. I added the internal standard. So yes, when we do the standard curves, QCs and patient plasma uh, unknowns, we add internal standard to each one, add our plasma. And in this case, we add our uh, T, uh, uh, TBME, our ether, and process them like I showed earlier uh, by vortexing the centrifuges and blowing them down and putting them in HPLC valves. Uh, we set up our run. And in this case, we, I, I ran one standard curve and QCs. And what we're looking at here is the one, the one on the left is our actual compound. This is our 744. And this one here is our internal standard. And if you can see this here, we ran one through a thousand nanograms per mil, and then I ran two QCs at each level. And what we're looking for here, what the program will do was, is actually, it will take these areas and it will, takes the area of our uh, standard, in this case, this one's a hundred nanogram per mil, and divides it, uh, with the area of the internal standard. And that gives you an area ratio. So as you go up uh, in concentration, the area ratio goes up and the program will do a linear regression. In this case, it's one through a thousand. And what we want to do here, what we're looking for here is actually the accuracy of the back calculated concentrations. We want it to be between 85 and 115. And we can see in this case, they are, they're all in that area. So that, that shows that this, this uh, assay is, is linear for this drug from one nanogram per mil to a thousand nanogram per mil. And when you have an unknown sample, it will take an area of that unknown sample of the compound, in this case, seven for four, and it will do the same thing as it does for the standard curve in, in that, it will divide the area of the unknown against the internal standard. And that will give you a number on the y-axis and that will calculate into our standard curve and it'll give us a concentration. Well, thank you for your attention. And I hope this brief demonstration uh, help expand a little bit of your knowledge on uh, LCMS as far as uh, analyzing patient samples. Thank you.